Recently, I watched a 2016 BBC documentary titled How to Stay Young, where Angela Rippon and Dr. Chris Van Tulliken team up with scientists to show what can be done to reverse the aging process. I also recently turned 40. I know it's just a number, but it made me start thinking about my own mortality and the aging process. I realised that now is the time to stop mucking around and really get serious about my health. So in this video, I'm going to step through some of the advice from the documentary and from my life to help you stay young. Step 1. Test how well you're aging. A simple test has been devised to see how well you are aging. It's called the Sit to Rise test. First, take off your shoes and stand cross-legged. The goal is to lower yourself down without touching the ground with your hands. Once you are down, you must then try to stand back up again by just using your legs. You cannot change the position of your feet. The scoring system is easy. You start with 10 points and then lose one point every time you have to use a hand or a knee. If you wobble, you lose half a point. The test measures your strength and balance, key indicators of how well you are aging. If you scored 8 to 10, you're more likely to have a long and healthy life. If you scored 6 to 7.5, you're about twice as likely to have a shorter life than the 8 to 10 group. For people who scored 3.5 to 5.5, they have about a 3.5 times the risk of not having a very long life. If you scored low, don't worry, it's not a death sentence. And that leads into Step 2 physical activity. You can improve your score, and therefore your longevity, by being more physically active in your daily life. Any exercise that targets strength, agility and balance will help improve your sit to rise test score. Whole body exercises are the best. Things like dancing, running around in the park, playing tennis or basketball. Just pumping iron in the gym and increasing your bicep size is not likely to improve your lifespan, although if you do a full body workout with lots of dynamic motion, then that surely will help. Step 3. Quit smoking. If you smoke, quit. It is the single biggest risk factor for how well you age. Step 4. Relieve stress and anxiety. Stress plays a huge effect on how well you age. You must find ways in life to stay cool, calm and collected. Luckily, some of the steps already mentioned can be used to lower your stress. Exercise is a great way to relieve stress. It has been shown that by putting physical stress on your body through exercise, there is a direct correlation with relieving mental stress. The benefits are strongest when you exercise regularly. Just by having a brisk walk every day is a good way to squeeze some extra exercise into your daily life. Also, it gives you a chance to admire the world around you, to stop and smell the roses, so to speak. Another way to relieve stress is to cut down on your caffeine intake. Caffeine is a stimulant found in coffee, tea, energy drinks and chocolate. High doses can increase your anxiety, so it's best to limit yourself to no more than a couple of cups of caffeinated drinks a day. Also, learn to say no. Take control over the parts of your life that you can change and are causing you stress. If your boss wants you to work late every Friday night, well, it's up to you to be assertive and say no. Don't let other people dictate how you should spend your free time. Step 5. Maintain a healthy weight. It's a given, but you have to maintain a healthy weight in order to stay healthy and improve your longevity. Being overweight increases your risk of type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease and strokes, sleep apnea, osteoarthritis, fatty liver disease, kidney disease, and if you're a lady, pregnancy problems. Obviously, exercise plays a part in maintaining a healthy weight, but by far the biggest contributor to being overweight is how much food you stick in your gob. I control this by fasting every day. That is, I aim to eat only one meal a day in the evening and try to only eat quality food. And that leads into Step 6. Eat healthy. In many areas of the Western world, fast food has replaced fresh food. It has been shown time and time again that processed food is not good for you. Recent studies have shown that ultra-processed foods are particularly bad for us. These include soft drinks, packaged snacks, reconstituted meat and pre-prepared frozen meals. They contain little, if any, fresh food and include ingredients like sweeteners, colours, preservatives and food-derived substances like cassian, lactose and gluten. PhD candidate Alexandra Jones from the George Institute for Global Health commented on the nutrient content of these ultra-processed foods. She said, The evidence suggests that perhaps there are some foods that, because they're ultra-processed, it doesn't matter what we do to their nutrient content. It's not going to make them better for us. You basically can't make an ultra-processed food healthy by just pumping it full of nutrients. Step 7. Eat a vegan diet. This is basically just a follow-on to Step 6. 
In the BBC documentary, a former American cardiothoracic surgeon by the name of Dr. Ellsworth Wareham was interviewed about his health. He practiced surgery up until the age of 95, and had been a strict vegan for more than 50 years. Unfortunately, he died at the age of 104 late last year. He lived in the Californian city of Loma Linda, which is renowned for having one of the highest rates of longevity in the United States. It is classified as a blue zone, in that a substantial proportion of its population live much longer than average with many living past 100. Loma Linda is also home to a large number of Seventh-day Adventists, which explains why many of its residents are vegetarian. The religion actively encourages its followers to live a vegetarian lifestyle. A vegan diet, in adults at least, has been shown to reduce your risk of cancer, heart attack and stroke. For vegans, overall mortality is reduced by a quarter compared to meat eaters, and they're only half as likely to get heart disease. When we eat animal protein, it stimulates a hormone in our bodies that we all need for growth. But as we get older, especially during middle age, this same hormone speeds up aging. So the more you replace animal protein with fruit and vegetables, the slower you will age. A little rule of thumb, the more colourful your meal is, then generally the more nutritious it is. So if you want to live longer, cut out dairy, meat and eggs, and replace them with nuts, beans and lots of fruit and veg. However, you don't have to become a full-blown vegan to gain a lot of the diet's benefits. Even just a small reduction in meat eating has been shown to slow down the ageing process. And the final step, step 8. Stay positive. I guess this is related to relieving stress, but by just being positive and optimistic in your life, studies have shown that this may help you to live up to seven years longer. And that's it, the eight steps to staying young. Test how well you are aging by performing the Sit to Rise test. Stay physically active by participating in activities that exercise your entire body, like dancing and tennis. Quit smoking. Relieve stress and anxiety by living a more social life, exercising more, and cutting down on stimulants like caffeine. Maintain a healthy weight by eating less and staying active. Eat healthy by avoiding processed foods and increasing your fruit and veg intake. Become a vegan if you really want to put the skids on aging. By avoiding meat, eggs and dairy, you prevent your body from overproducing a growth hormone that makes you age faster. And finally, stay positive. There's no use having a negative outlook in life, especially as you grow older.